let's take a look at Serpens version 2.0 and let's make a save to Dropbox add-on. Alright guys, how's it going? Now there has been major changes to the visual scripting nodes, or Serpens version 2.0. Now the developers have been hard at work and they've pretty much written this from the ground up. And I have to say, it's absolutely fantastic. It's much more flexible in terms of building an add-on for Blender. It's more intuitive and it's pretty much more fun to use to be honest. Now, if you're used to version 1.0, hopefully this tutorial will bring you up to scratch, we'll go over some of the new features and we'll replicate what I made at the start of the video. So in order to get started, we need to go to the visual scripting window. We'll add in a new node, we'll call this add-on save to external. And obviously we need to give it an author name. And we're pretty much set up to build our very first add-on. So let's give us a little bit more room. Now one of the new features that I absolutely love is being able to add to a menu. So I'm going to press Shift and A, S to search, and I'm going to search for add to menu. Now rather than me saying Shift and A, S to search, we'll just drop down nodes from now on. So you can see here, view 3D. So if I click on this button, we can now append to a menu. Now, if you want to add it to the Add menu, for example, or the Object menu, you can pretty much add it anywhere that you like. But I'm going to add it into the right context menu. So I'm going to right click and I'm going to append the menu here. So the next thing I need to set up is an operator and a run operator. Now we could avoid this, but we'll just set it up as practice. So let's quickly drop down an operator. We'll call this Save External. And it's always good to give it a description, so we'll save this to Dropbox. And the next thing I'm going to do is show you a new feature with the run operator. So let's drop down a run operator. And you can see here we have a search field, and we have this little button to the right hand side of it. Now if I click this button, you'll see that it says paste operator. Now this means we can actually copy any operator inside of Blender. So let's say for example, we just want to copy the aspect of the Y, we can right click on it. Serpent's copy property, or maybe we want to do something like the render samples, right click, Serpent's copy property, perfect. Now obviously we want to save an external file, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to File, Save Copy, and I'm going to right click, copy it, and then paste it in. And you can see that it sets up the operator for us. Now I'm going to connect the operator into the run operator, and one thing that I'm going to uncheck is the call invoke. Call invoke essentially brings up the file browser and I just want to automatically save this file. Now I'll scroll down the list and I'm going to take off remap relative. I just want to make an exact copy, I don't really want to worry about relative paths and things like this. And we're pretty much set up, so let me show you a brand new feature as well. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to drop down a button and I'm going to connect this to the add menu because obviously we need a button. And we're going to call this save to Dropbox. And one of the new features is custom icons inside of Serpents. So for the next few weeks, I fully expect to see icons pretty much everywhere. So if we go to the Serpents tab on the right hand side here, you'll see that we have new features as well. Adding variables, properties, custom icons, assets. So if you want to include something like a file or an asset, you can now do this as well. You also have functions inside of Serpents, which is a huge, huge must. And it's pretty much why it was rewritten as well. So I'm going to go to custom icons, I'm going to hit the plus sign, I'm going to rename this Dropbox. I'm going to open it up just like you would with any other file and I'm going to grab in the build icon because I don't want Dropbox to sue me. And what I can do here is I can use the getter button and this will drop the node down and I'm going to connect this to the icon. Now there's a new feature called switch icons, this lets you switch icons so you can actually put like a boolean value so you can have like an on and off state with your icons now much needed as well so we're pretty much set up now one thing regarding the run operator is it won't actually save a file because we've not dictated the file path so what we need to do here is is actually assign a file path now there's several ways we can do this we can make it a string for example and do something like c column dropbox or what we can actually do is we can grab the path components now what I'm actually going to do here is I'm just going to quickly save the blend file and I'll explain this in a second. So we'll just call this save blend, we'll save the blender file and the reason I've done this is because I want to grab this name and I want to inject it into the file path. So what I can do here is I can drop down a path component node 
Now I could grab the path that we're using here at the moment, but I would like to dictate it. So I'm going to click here. I'm going to take the relative path off and I'm going to select the Dropbox folder. And that should be C column slash Dropbox. Now one thing that I do recommend is putting a print node down. And this means we can check inside the console. So I'm going to quickly drop down a print node. And I'm going to just put it in the chain and I'm going to disconnect this just for now. And I can put the directory into the print node. And before I can pile it, what I'm going to do regarding the button is I'm going to select the save external, which is essentially this run operator. I'm going to quickly compile it. You can see here I have saved to Dropbox and I'm going to run it. I'm going to go to the system console and you can see where it's actually saving. Now, one thing you can do is you can always check inside of Serpens and it'll give you the print value as well, which is handy. You don't necessarily need to have the console, but it's good to have. So essentially what I have here is a file path. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm actually going to join these paths together with the file name. So I'll search for join path. And this will actually aid with putting things in like backslashes and stuff like this. So I'll put this into the base. And what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to grab the file name. So I'm going to copy the path components node. So the next thing I'm going to drop down is a scene context node. So shift and A, S to search, scene context. And you can see here we have a whole bunch of options, active scene, active area, stuff like this. File is saved, file has changes, and the file path. I'm going to grab the file path, I'm going to connect it to the path components, and then I have the file name, and I'm going to connect this up here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to connect this to the file path of the run operator. Let's quickly connect this up to test it. I'm going to compile it one more time, save to Dropbox, and let's quickly check out the Dropbox folder, and you can see here, save blend, dot blend. Perfect. Now we could actually take this up a level and we could add in something like the current time to the file name. And I'll quickly show you how to do that as well. Now with the file name, it actually applies the dot blend at the end. So what we can do here is we can actually split the string. So if I search for split, split the string, I'll take the file name and I'll split the string on dot blend. Now you can actually check out what is happening by putting this into a print node, but I know for a fact that the index of 0 will be the file name and the index of 1 will essentially be the dot blend. So what I can do here is I can actually grab the element of the list and that's the index of 0. And then what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to combine this with something like the current date. So what we need to do is add in a combine string. We'll put the file name into value 1 because that's the file name. And what I can do here is, is I can use the current time node. So we'll drop down the current time. And I'll inject something like the date. Now, I already know the date will get formatted with a slash. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to replace that and put that with an underscore. And it just means it's a bit more legible when you're using files. So I can use something like replacing the string. I'll connect this to the date. So the old value is this. And what I'm going to do is underscore. And what I need to do here is add in the dot blend towards the end. Because I've actually split the list. I'm only using the first element here. So we can add in dot blend. We can then combine this back into the path. We'll compile it one more time. We'll right click, we'll save to Dropbox and let's check out what we get. Save blend and there's our date. And that is pretty much a basic introduction to Serpens version 2.0. This program is absolutely massive and I've been building add-ons for the last week with it. Do me a favour guys, like the video, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, follow me on Twitter, support me on Gumroad, you know what to do, take care.